Okay. There go. All that's still good. Right. Hold on. Okay, good. If you want to start by introducing yourself, that you can do that. Sorry, uh, right, what's sir. up, Twitch uh, and everybody out there, Dragon viewers? Uh, my name is GC the Rooster Deity, uh, also known as GC God, Godcock, Doc, whatever you want to call me. Any and all of the above is fine. Been a streamer for about two years. Um, on Twitch exclusively, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, met a lot of great people, and look forward to meeting uh, a lot more. Yeah, and for those of you who don't know who I am, as I'm just quickly running through getting stuff set up, I am Dragon TTV, or just Dragon for short, and we are, and this is a little testing doing a podcast something I want to add discussing news um, twitch news streaming tips and tricks tech all that stuff a lot of ger a lot of that kind of stuff yeah so I was thinking first starting with just talking about this is state of streaming how it changed because you've been streaming for a while I've been streaming probably about just over two years now, and we both watched streamers for a while before we started streaming, probably. Yes, absolutely. Well, um, I mean, in my opinion, the, the, the Twitch has changed uh, a lot in that, um, you know, when I first started watching streaming, um, it was centered mostly around gaming. Uh, basically, it was... You know, a lot of people were, uh, you know, just sitting, you know, the game was the backdrop, um, and they would usually, you know, have some, you know, a good conversation going while playing some kind of game. Um, and then there was people who were, uh, you know, more game focused, if you will, like it wasn't, they weren't quite as, uh, um, quite as interactive, but their gameplay was the focus and they were you know, very high level uh, PvP players usually, uh, that kind of thing. And um, to me, the uh, the face of Twitch, or the I guess not really the face of Twitch, but like the the viewer demographic, I guess if you will, what the viewer is really looking for in Twitch has changed significantly, and I would say this is just the last couple of years, um, in that. Um, it's more talk show or creative streams and less games. Like, you've got a lot of streamers who don't even play games. They literally just chat with their viewers, you know, and then you've got creative streams, you've got people cooking, uh, playing music, singing, you know, all those different things. Uh, a lot of different things. You've even got people who travel, you know what I mean? Like, they literally, they go to restaurants and they go do things like that. Uh, social eating type stuff and it's really it's pretty cool it's exciting stuff it's uh, difficult to navigate what to do with your own channel to keep up in that regard like I know everybody always says you know you stream what you want but at the end of the day if you're trying to do this to make any kind of living you have to keep up with you know what people want you're trying to provide a product to people you're trying to provide content and it doesn't do you any good if you're the only person who enjoys your content is yourself yeah, true. Um, yeah, yeah, like I, one note I have written down here is Twitch is basically a big giant supply and demand. And people demand a product, and we are the ones that supply it. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the face of everything is changing, really. Like, I mean, I can remember a time when, you know, places like Twitter and, uh, you know, even, you know, not so much Facebook, but mostly Twitter 
was just, you know, like it was a place where you met people possibly to collaborate with, you know, or just, you know, you just, it was just a list of people that you, you know, had on your friends list, essentially, or follower list on Twitter. But like now there's a lot of pressure even on Twitter to create content for it, you know, through TikTok videos and, and memes and GIFs and, and uh, you know, just random thoughts like it, it's it's you know it's twitter twitter itself has become almost its own like it's almost its own content uh entity yeah. if you will like you know like i lose followers and gain followers on a daily basis um you know based on interaction and you know things like that or i'll post something maybe that pisses somebody off or i'll post something maybe that you know, people really like, and you know, your followers a ebb and flow, and it, that's just to me. That's just alien to me. Like I just, I just use Twitter as kind of uh, like a contact list, if you will. It, um, I feel like its value comes in. You know, the more people follow you, the more people you follow, the more exposure you get and give. You know, that's how I use it. But that's not really how. It's it's that's kind of not the thing anymore. Yeah. Strange. Yeah, and you're, um, like you're saying, it's like everything's changing. It's all one big fluent motion. Uh huh. Now, with that being said, you gotta admit there's a lot of cool things going on on Twitch, but yet a lot of bad things going on on Twitch. Like a cool thing that got written down. A bunch of Twitch streamers have raised over two hundred thousand dollars for the Australian Fire Relief Project. Yeah. No, and and day in and and, and day out, there's all kinds of great charities going on on Twitch. Um, you know, people are coming together. You know, through gaming and and just you know social. You know, it's not even just games. It's it's a social you know thing too. But uh, um, but uh. Um, like every year, um, I, I'm sure you're familiar because you played some Destiny, but King Athalion and Professor Broman and, and uh, K, K Magic, T Rex, Char, Dr. Lupo, all those guys, they all get together for Guardian Con and do a week of fundraising. And like last year, they raised millions of dollars for St. Jude, you know? Yeah, know, that's true. You know, for, for sick kids. And that's just, that just blows my mind, man. Like, it's, it's, you, like, it just shows you that, you know, we're not just a bunch of dumb kids playing video games or dumb, you know, we're not kids, obviously, but you know what I mean? Like, there's way more to it than uh, a lot of the people on the outside looking in would, would you know, guess. Yeah, and I'm just quickly putting a hat on. I got a bad hair day going on. <laughs> um, Put your Pokemon hat on, damn it. That's what I did. <laughs> Um, but, uh, like, with a bunch of the good things going on, like, the charities, the, um, just the general talk about mental health and all that, there's a lot of bad things, like, Twitch Terms of Service is really interesting, like, there was this Twitch streamer, I forgot to get the name for, her, but she was suspended for three days for drawing a, a woman on stream. The thing about the about TOS that I, that I don't like, like obviously there needs to be rules in place to protect both the viewer and the streamer. But the thing that I don't like about TOS uh, personally is that it's so open to interpretation. Like, what gets one person banned gets another person, you know, a lot of followers. And so it, it's and it's not even just you know big or small like a lot of people would argue that the bigger people get away with more and i'm sure there's a little bit of truth to that but at the same time like i've seen some you know punishments handed out to big streamers and small uh that were kind of a, you know very much a surprise to me you know it's just like okay so i think it's just I think, in all honesty, it's kind of it's the luck of the draw who reviews the case, in a lot of ways, which kind of sucks. Um, you know, it's kind of like sports penalties. You know what I mean? Like one ref sees something and it's a major infraction, and another ref might see the same play and go, 
oh, that's, you know, it's, you know, that's not that big a deal. And so, or it we're going to get like to that master. Do what? Oh, master of spies. He put in throwing the cat thing that happened last year. Crazy how no punishment was set in place. It's like, yeah, we're going to get to that. I got stuff like that written down. Yeah, well, and I mean, and there's a big push right now. And, uh, um, and, you know, like, you know, we might as well address the elephant in the room. Uh, I think both sides of the argument are extremely passionate and over, uh, a little over passionate about it is, is, uh, quote unquote boob streamers. Um, I got that written down I, too. <laughs> I think, uh, I think, um, like people who are angry about it are far too angry. Um, you know, sex sells though. Oh yeah. And I think, and I think so people that are saying that it's not a thing are not being honest or truthful either. Um, so I honestly think like honestly Twitch could do everybody a favor and create a genre for these people because these women do not deserve to be harassed no matter what you think about them they don't deserve to get you know told you know to do horrible shit to themselves or they should die and yeah like they don't deserve that um they nobody does i don't care you know if you disagree with them or not um but i think if they were given a genre if there was a lewd genre with maybe a little bit more age authentic authentication required um and give these these people because there's actually male lewd streamers too believe it or not they're not yeah. very common but there are male you know there are dudes that have fans only pages and sell lewds and you know like it's fucking nuts to me but like it's a thing and so um i feel like if you just give these people a genre and a platform um then you know and if they're gonna uh you know, operate under those guidelines that they need to be, you know, it's more than just a mature warning. Like, you know, I have my channel is a mature channel and that's because I cuss like a sailor and, you know, I talk a lot of shit, you know, like that's why. But I think in, in a case like that, there needs to be some sort of, you know, uh, identification process. Um, hey, you know, yeah. this, this person, you know, is, you know, showing skin or this person is, you know, like and it, and it wouldn't even just be for loot streamers. Like let's say like someone has to, wants to have a channel, uh, that you know like there's mental health, and and you know think channels that specify and that was like, what if there won't, you know somebody that actually knows what they're talking about wants to have a channel that addresses, you know sexual health and sexual fucking ten you know there are those things and that would be a, a service you know that could be a, a good service to people who you know need it, people who have hangups or what you know whatever like. There's no reason why that couldn't be a thing, but I think that it needs, like, it needs its own place. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like that would solve a lot of this, these issues. Yeah, and it, I agree with you on that because, I mean, people are going to use their, their assets, assets. yeah, that's the correct <laughs> word, their assets to sell. And, I mean, yeah. it's like, I was on Twitch looking for a new streamer, and my hands are very animated, sorry. Um, to watch and I was recommended a lot of these put it properly lewd streamers yeah and I was just like okay some of them were you could tell were playing the game some of them weren't and it's like just watching and uh, just seeing what they had to offer and some of them are selling lewd or even nudes on their Patreon it's like if you want to do that cool but it's not for me and I think Twitch yeah. needs to see create a thing where they can recommend people that are more recommended like you're more mature they're going to you should be recommended more mature yeah streamers I'm more kid family friendly I should be recommended more of those type of streamers exactly well and in all honesty I feel it would allow these people to be themselves too instead of having to skirt around the you know the current guidelines you know what I mean because they are and 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 I feel like that is a, maybe another reason why people get upset is because they're they're basically playing as loose with the rules as they possibly can without getting in trouble, and you know that's a that's a hindrance to to everybody. You know, whereas if these these guys had a quote unquote platform, you know, like um, you know, I feel like it might be. I just feel like it might be better for everybody. I feel like.
like people would be a lot less angry. Yeah. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe people are still going to go around, you know, being super pissed. Like, I, you know. Yeah, another thing I noticed is that a lot of people are leaving Twitch for other platforms, Mixer, YouTube, Facebook Gaming. So, how do you feel about about all that? Like, people are leaving Twitch. Personally, it's like, I'm surprised after so long, Twitch is, looks like it's finally coming off its pedestal a little bit. Yeah, um, I feel like uh, my personal opinion on that is that um, as an affiliate, I should not be locked into an exclusive streaming uh, platform with Twitch. Um, I should be able to do uh, multi uh, streams. I forget what the the software that allows you to. There is, there stream is labs. a. Is it okay? Yeah, I'll well, have it. It allows it allows you to stream on multiple platforms at the same time. Um, I think with it's. Um, with the way that Twitch, YouTube, especially YouTube, um, and other uh, content creation platforms are becoming more and more strict and more and more uh, stingy with their payouts and everything else. Um, you know, it's it's becoming more and more increasingly, you know, necessary for uh, streamers to not put to all, not put all of their you know eggs in one basket and diversify and stream on multiple platforms so that they can afford to you know pay their bills with content creation and I don't really think that's fair um, I think at the end of the day the streamer does most of the work you know for these platforms um, and they're you know and, and if ad companies want to you know you know jump on that you know quote unquote moral high ground and Oh, I don't want some dude that talks about cock and balls, you know, to run a, you know, run an ad for my product. You know, I really don't think they give a shit personally. I think that's just a way for them to, uh, you know, stigmatize and lowball content creators. Um, personally, I don't think they care. Um, I think most of these people that are making these complaints probably go home and, you know make dick and fart jokes and talk shit and do their thing and I, I feel like they truly don't actually give a shit. Maybe a couple of them do but I seriously doubt that they sit around and go, you know, I'm, that the CEO for, you know, Budweiser is, is like, I saw, you know, our ad run after a, a streamer who was talking about you know, fucking I don't know, farts and ass and it made me super, super uncomfortable, you know, my product who you know you, you're just like dude shut up man you sell beer okay like, yeah i mean and this is gonna probably piss some people off but you sell alcohol which is the og date rape drug okay shut the fuck up like you're not gonna sit there and make me feel bad for talking about dick and fart jokes before you run a beer commercial shut the fuck up dude. yeah and i mean i understand where some of them are coming from, like some of their products, because if it's adult related products like beer, alcohol, um, or adult related games that are rated M for mature, then I would understand them not caring, but I've seen ads run for kid stuff on some of these channels that it really shouldn't be running on, in my opinion. So it's kind of like a great area of advertisement. Like what's going on with YouTube with the whole advertisers pulling out. It's kind of a very big gray area on Twitch too. Yeah. I mean, I understand it more so YouTube, but like I hardly ever see like the most kid thing I see running on Twitch is, you know, like Coke ads, you know, Coca-Cola, yeah. you know, commercials. Twitch or, or excuse me, YouTube. Okay. Yeah. I see, you know, ads for, uh, but I mean, if that if that's the point, then they need to let a like a channel like Market is is mature, and therefore certain ads don't get ran. And if they want to run a different monetization contract for for the price of being an adult channel, then fine. I think most people would be okay with that. But it needs to be upfront and honest um, instead of just demonetizing videos, which is what they're doing now. Like uh, a, an old school YouTuber that I that kind of like. I watched back in the day that kind of got me into content creation, uh, Boogie2998. Oh, I, I love him. Dude, he's awesome. Like, 
But dude, he's having trouble. Like all of a sudden, they're demonic. Like he had a mental health, uh, a pro mental health video, and it was addressing suicide. And he got his video demonetized because he said the word suicide. And it was a very pro mental health. You know, if you're feeling these thoughts, go out. Like it was a positive video, but they demonetized him just for saying the word. And you're like, no, dude, a little context, you know, goes a long way. Like. Your algorithm is just picking up flag words. It's not even paying attention to what it's doing, and that's that's not okay. Yeah, it's and also right now the internet's on shaky grounds, especially in America, because of the Child Online Protection Privacy Act or COPPA. Yeah. How how much do you know about that? Um, I don't know an extreme amount. I understand what it like what it does. I understand that like what its point is, but I also understand that it's a very broad and sweeping thing. It's not really like it's got a lot of work to do before it's something that actually like its intended purpose is uh, noble, but it's their methods are shit. Yeah, for people watching that that don't understand what it is, basically any. Originally, back when the internet was basically first born, a year afterwards, COPPA was made, the Children Online Privacy Protection Act. And what it basically states, in a nutshell, is that any children under 13, they need parental written consent, the companies like YouTube and all that, to collect data on these children. Now, the reason YouTube's under fire, besides demonetizing LGBTQ content, is because they were collecting this data not, I mean, without following COPPA. Yeah. And some people, I saw, like, op-ins and discussions online where they're worried Twitch is doing the same. So it's kind of very shaky grounds on the internet right now ever since YouTube basically got hit with that like 180 something dollar um no, they got hit hard. Yeah, 180 million dollar fine or whatever. Now, and see that's what irritates me though is like we to make things easier like we have this one size fits all kind of like broad stroke, you know, approach to like everything and, and like I don't feel like I don't know it's 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 kind of frustrating like it's like can you you know use a little bit of common sense a little bit of you know like it's you know what I mean like I feel like I just feel like they do things out of convenience and punishments are not always adequate or they're either inadequate or way heavy handed and just because they're like, well, the law says this, and you're like, well, yeah, but dude, context, man, it goes a long way. Yeah, that's basically the magic word of this podcast is context, because a lot of this could be different if context was taken into picture. Like, for instance, um, just mistakes streamers make, like small and big streamers make the mistakes could be taken different way in context. Like, it, we made a lot of mistakes go, growing on Twitch. That's for sure. Can you recommend any, can you talk about like any lessons you learned and that uh, I will also talk about? Uh, yeah, dude. Um, honestly, you need to, like there's a fine line between, um, like, I've noticed with, with Twitch, uh, there is a very fine line between, um, like, edginess and toxicity, if you will, like, as far as the viewer is concerned, like, and you have to be careful, like, I'm a very edgy person, dude, I talk a lot of shit, and it's, I know it's cost me a few viewers here and there. Um, and I'm learning because, in all honesty, like the goal of my channel is to is to be a positivity focused channel. Even though I'm edgy and I'm and I talk shit, like I also like strive to have a place where 
people can come and be themselves and um you know like you can talk about you know everything you want to talk like you can get a bad day you can come talk and and tell me about it and you're not going to be judged and you know uh you know um and and you have to be careful like because some people take things the wrong way um and then also some people are just looking to take things the wrong way if that makes any sense um uh some people are looking to be offended triggered pissed uh, and then they're going to tell all their friends that you know drag lagoon or godcock's an asshole and you know <laughs> y- you know yada 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 you know fucking and so you you have to really be careful there's a fine line um you can't always speak your mind um not just because of tos but because you know, in 2019, everybody can be offended. Everybody, you know, anything can offend anybody. You know, um, like, if, you know, you could, if in this day and age, you could cure a major horrible epidemic disease, but if you do it in such a way that, you know, like, I don't know, marginalizes or does any kind of anything to some kind of, you know, let's say you got to kill the koala bears to cure cancer. I'm not making jokes about cancer, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that dude, you're going to fucking piss everybody off. Like, everybody's going to be like, nah, man, koala bears are cute, man, you know? <laughs> like, and so it's just, it's a, it's an interesting time, dude. Yeah, um, like, I understand where you're coming from. It's like, I was raised to have thick skin, not get offended very easily. Not exactly. But a lot of friends that I know, they read a news story and they need to go to, like, a safe space. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's on, it's so funny, dude, because, like, it, it, it's really take your pick on what the topic is, too. Like, I'm always amused because, like, I'm very, like, like I'm very thick-skinned, not a lot pissed me off. I have a horribly dark sense of humor. Oh. Uh, also, also, that gets me in trouble on Twitch sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, um, like, I, I'm always amused because there's, oh, like, depending on the topic, like, there's going to be a group that's going to be like, oh, look at you. You're so easily offended. You're such a bitch. And then you hit a topic that is a sore spot to them, and they sound just like the people they were just ridiculing for being pissed. They're like, oh, you know, you're just like, oh, wait a minute. So you really, it's, it's a, you can't dish it out. Like, you can... You can be the asshole, but you can't take, you know, dealing with assholes. And so it's it's just funny to me, man. Like, like I said, there's always somebody that's going to be offended. And so you have to be very careful um, on Twitch. Um, also, for those of you that are new, follow for follow does not work. Oh, yeah, no, that does not work. <laughs> just don't do it. On my old channel... Before I lost the information to get into that, I done it to, all the way to 100 followers, and mm-hmm. I did not experience any growth from that. So if you're the if you're a new streamer and you're thinking about doing follow for follow, sub for sub, host for host, that stuff does not work. And in fact, mm-hmm. it goes against TOS now. I think. Yeah, they they're they're big on it. If they catch you promoting it, or, or they'll get you get to keep it. <laughs> Yeah, and another mistake I I've personally learned. If you find a lane that works for you, but you also big enough to stretch and try new things out, like a podcast or playing a more mature game, and you're family friendly, stick to that lane. But don't change your whole setup because then you'll lose a lot of people. Yeah, no, you will. Like you like. Variety streamers have a hard sell, dude. Like, um, you know, I was a primarily a Destiny streamer, and I saw a huge amount of growth. And then I got tired of Destiny. Destiny kind of, you know, died. I, my growth started slowing down. But I still had my regulars. And uh, then when I really switched games, like, a lot of those people don't come around anymore. And it just sucks. So, um, and then trying to start out as a variety streamer is just very difficult. So... Uh, my advice is to pick a game you really love, stream it 85% of the time, and, you know, play something else here and there, 
and then if you get a following and a, a you know a, a group of people that are there for you they will be there no matter what you play yeah but, but you have to get that first you have to build a community first yeah and also a big thing that twitch is dealing with right now that i've noticed i've seen it on your channel and i've seen it on a few other friends' channels these people that promote like bots bot services yeah. and all that don't do that that yeah. is a big way to just get hit with the ban hammer yeah twitch will ban your your ass if they find you be body and it's funny too because no like i literally get uh I get updates or I get whispers, you know, at least twice a week with somebody going, Hey man, you know, $50 a month, they'll get you, you know, 500 viewers in your channel every time you stream. And I'm like, Oh yeah, sure. One, I don't believe it. And two, uh, it's, it, those aren't real viewers. Like it'd be different if like this dude knew 500 people that like legitimately logged into Twitch every day. And would come to your channel and chat and act like actual viewers like okay that's not the case like these aren't even actual people they're not going to talk and it's just it's just goofy dude it doesn't work it's enticing like i understand especially for a small streamer who's trying to get you know higher up on the directory you know hey you know i'm gonna you know this is cool i paid this service and you know it's gonna work and unfortunately it doesn't it doesn't there's there's no easy way okay it's it's like any other uh, entertainer entertainment art uh, career. You're gonna work your ass off for a long time, and maybe not ever get anything out of it. And you know, it's 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 a it's a it's very much a crapshoot, dude. Uh, yeah. You, you know, you've got to produce great content, and even then, like, dude, I know what, I know. A hundred streamers who are a absolutely deserving. You know, they absolutely deserve, you know, Dr. Disrespect's level of fucking, you know, the, that level of success. They're great people. They're they're funny. They're they're creative. They're, like, they're great streamers, dude. They deserve everything. And, you know, they're sitting on, you know, ten people in their channel. So. Yeah, you if, know. if you're coming in here or thinking it's going to be overnight success... Nine out of ten times, even most of the time, ten out of ten times, it won't be. No. Nope. Changing up the subject a little bit. Uh, sure. We both like tech stuff. Well, I believe we both like tech stuff, like talking about the latest processor or some of the mm -hmm. great things coming from the tech industry. How do... I don't know if you've been paying attention to the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox X series. Yes. One, how do you feel, because I, I love picking people's brains about this stuff, how do you feel about the, like the fact that one it, PlayStation 5 is most likely not going to be unveiled at E3, and two, why the design pros, product? Like It looks like it's coming from the head of a shark vacuum the playstation 5 oh you mean the weird the v-shaped thing no, yeah. i like it i think it's neat i think both consoles this time around are striving to do something just different um instead of these black monolithic boxes um the xbox the new xbox uh looks looks like a little mini pc yeah me. it does and the the playstation like you said it looks like a vacuum cleaner or almost like an old, like, fucking, uh... Radio? Uh, yeah, it looks like an old radio. Um, yeah, I'm... Uh, I don't know, dude. I pro I'm not sure if I'm gonna to bite on this console cycle. Um, I've really gone kind of exclusively PC. Um, and mostly because there's not that many exclusives anymore. Um, and also, I don't like how consoles me pay for my internet twice. Um, uh, but... I, I'm a big tech guy. Um, I, I've got, you know, PlayStation 4 and, you know, the Xbox One. Like, I've always been an early adopter of consoles, so this will be a first for me to not early adopt. I'm not saying I'm not going to get them, but I'm definitely not going to be getting them at launch. Um, I'm going to wait I'm gonna wait and make them show me something. 
Uh, the one thing I will say about the PlayStation that has me kind of excited, though, is that there's they've come out and said that uh, expect the PS5 <laughs> to be 100% uh, 100% backwards compatible with all generations of PlayStation. Yeah, and I love that, what that's that's cool. Yeah, and I love what Master of Spies says. The the new Xbox is a table stand for the PS5. Yeah, maybe. The the thing that, that I think Xbox is being smart about this time is the one they really had, like, the Xbox One. It's one device to rule them all. Like, they wanted to replace your DVR and your fucking, your, your everything. Like, they, they were trying to be an entertainment box, and games were, like, a second, like, Games were not the primary function, and so uh, I think that's what cost them this console war. You know, this particular uh, console cycle uh, was that they um, they tried too hard to be a lot of other things, and this time around they've they've come out and said, "No, nah, we made a mistake. Uh, this is a game box. Like this is Xbox Series X or whatever they're going to end up calling it." is is first and foremost a game console like we're not really worried about anything else so and i think that's a smart move yeah because i mean if you know what you're good at and you stick to it then you're going to do better in that trying yeah. to make a game system that's also dvr that's also a jukebox that's also your news outlet, it, you're going to be giving up on something. Like, for instance, if you're trying to focus on the TV aspect, you're going to be giving up on the game aspect. Yeah. But it's... I don't know how I feel about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox X series, personally, because, I mean... I'm so used to seeing them promise so many different things and yet deliver on so little. It's like politics. No, it's true. It is true. Um, not I, I found consoles to not be quite as bad as like games. Uh, you know, like a lot of times games, they hype themselves up in a major way and then the game can't do half of the shit that they promise. Um, you know, even like case in point, the classic example was the first Division game. You know, they delayed that fucking game for two years, told you all these things it was going to do, and then it didn't do literally most of them when it, when it came out. And another one that comes to mind, it was the original release of uh, No Man's Sky. That's they, what it is. They flat out lied about what that game was, you know, was going to do. And now, finally, uh, you know, like however many, you know, all this time later, and then another DLC that you had to buy later... They finally delivered the game that they promised, and so it's it's kind of I don't know. Yeah, and that's actually another thing I was going to talk to you about and to everyone watching is all this stuff involving like games making big promises and stuff. Like a classic example I can think of is Fallout seventy six, supposed to be this. Yeah big game that is supposed to change the face of RPG and it took another game, um, Outer Worlds to basically do that no, exactly so my, my question is uh, what do you think about that, like all these games trying to make all these big promises but not holding up I think the problem is is that another thing that is also changing is games and how we play them, how we digest them, and like, like the problem I have right now with with games is like literally every single one of them wants to be this game that never uh, ends. Like literally every game out there has a season pass and DLC and trying to keep this go game going. Like used to, you just saw a lot of games you just bought and played and the story mode and you played it and it was done and you was like you know like into that that was it like and and like you didn't there wasn't any expectation for more afterwards 
and maybe that's the gamers, the the market, you know, to blame for that. But like, it just I think that because of that, like, it encourages developers to to ship a lot of games like out, that aren't finished at release, with the promise of finishing shit in the DLC and 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 also you have a lot of games that don't really have they don't really commit to an identity sort of like the Xbox one like they're not like you know they're like well battle royals are big but you know how can we make you know fallout a battle royal game you know, you know what I mean like they don't like everybody's just trying to to sell out like they're not trying to fucking you know make anything you know that is just really good at this thing that you know the people that play it like they're trying to sell to a broader audience and that's kind of sucks sometimes it can really blow up in their faces yeah and again master spy brought up a good point that could be counted as false marketing but okay okay bud We went and got Whoppers and fries and fucking want any of it. Wants a bowl of fruit. I'm like, wow, you're the only kid I know that could turn down a burger and fries for a bowl of cereal. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah, but a big subject I want to bring up is some of this stuff that is changing in the gaming space like now it's like with the xbox game pass and i believe playstation's coming out with their own version of it Mm -hmm. are they that's cool it's like you can play game xbox exclusive games on your pc now like the halo master chief collection or even the gears of war collection is starting to come to pc now so it's like it's one of those questions where it's like, are they making a mistake like that? Because if they're good on that, it's going to push more towards the PC era than going back to consoles, it feels like. Yeah, um, dude, eventually, eventually they're going to have to get, uh, like, eventually you probably will see consoles phase out. Um, you, you're just going to. Microsoft has already started to hedge its bets by making, you know, all of their games are Windows based, and so like you know they're they're on Xbox and PC, you know what I mean? And they're they're but they're they're gonna get you either way because they're you know they Microsoft created Windows, you know, so like it really doesn't matter um, for them. Sony is the one that's got the most to lose by the consoles dying out. Um, Nintendo. Uh, I don't know what they're gonna do, dude. Like, if, like Nintendo is really good to like when people think they're down, then they come out with the Wii or the Switch, and it like does it's just they're really their their hardware is where their innovation is, and they have these uh, independent properties that are you know endearing, you know Mario and all those things, Kirby, you know all that shit that only they fucking make. Like Nintendo owns you know more. Gold mine properties. Hold on for a second. Yeah, and while he's doing that, my question to you, Chad, is about any of the subjects we talked about or any you could think of, what comes to mind with all, right. all the stuff going on? There we go. Dude, I think... Uh... I'm sorry, I play Monster Hunter. I think I'm probably going to lose this match because I got like 10 minutes left to kill this monster. He's being an asshole. Anyway. Sorry, my dog decided to go crazy at that moment. Oh, you're fine. It happens, man. But talking about more serious stuff now, Right now, this country as it is, and the world as it is, is on very shaky soil as it is, as we see.
And I'll ask this when he comes back, but what was I was going to ask about. I'm back. Sorry. I had to mute for a minute. Oh, you're good, man. Did... Oh, ran out of time. Right on. All right. Anyway, so. Um... Basically, to sum up my question, and this was just one of the quick talking points, and I think that'll be it, is coming into a gen. A generation where the biggest meme right now is World War Three. What yeah. is some of the concerns you have with like the state of Iran and just the plain state of the world as it is? Because right now everyone's watching the U.S., Iran, China, and Russia, seeing what all is going to happen. Yeah, um, you know, I think a lot of it is hype my honest opinion um especially with the way things like they escalated really quickly and then immediately everybody was like okay we're done you know with this whole iran uh you know debacle um basically it was a bunch of saber rattling and a bunch of bullshit um the the country is divided the world is divided um you know the problem is is like you know regardless of how you feel about his policies. Uh, we've got a president right now that goes on Twitter and is an absolute fucking blowhard. And I'm sorry if you're on the outside looking in, it looks like he's a hothead and he has no control of his temper. I mean, this is regardless of his policies, whether you like him or not. This is, this is from, you got to try to respect what other people see. And right now they see a guy who is on Twitter every day basically acting like an angry pissed off teenager um, and that's gonna cause some some that's gonna cause some uh, instability you know that's gonna cause the rest of the world to take a step back and go whoa like and and it's already started like you know as much as you know Russia and you know uh, the, this administration is you know acting like we're trying to amend eyes between the you know the two countries which you know if that was the case that's not a big deal like it's good to have allies it's good to you know the more people that are on good terms with each other that's fine it's not about like oh we can't ever you know be friendly with russia like that's not even a problem it's that russia is acting like they're our buddy but then they go and on the world stage and say the united states is losing its edge it's time for somebody else to uh you know, take over as the world leader, you know, and they're trying to get the dollar, you know, as the standardized currency to be changed. Uh, China's doing the same thing. Uh, and so, the, like, basically, as terms of what we have to do as a country is literally both sides of the aisle need to sit down and go, there. this is important to us, it's not important to you, and vice versa. And we're not going to agree, but we have to find some sort of agreement that works for everybody. And, and you know, not just sitting around and calling people names. And you know, it, and because it, both sides are doing it, both sides are doing it. Okay, like it's not, you know, it, you know, if you talk to the Republicans, they're going to tell you that the Democrats are the biggest thing that irritates me is right now the Republicans are basically saying that anybody who doesn't think like them is not a real American. And that's garbage. Um, not to say that, Demo that the Democrats aren't being assholes too, but this dehumanizing of your opponents is dangerous stuff. And I feel like both sides need to sit down and come to terms with the fact that at the end of the day, we're all American. We're literally all American. And I don't think anybody, or at least the majority of people walking around this country, hate America. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's like the other side's accusing the other side of, you know what I mean? Like, 
I really don't. Um, they just have different mindsets and ideas of where they want this country to go um, and different things that they value, you know. Uh, and it's gotten so bad to the point that, you know, a lot of these things that I don't feel like should be a partisan thing, that should be, you know, a Democrat thing or a Republican thing, have become so because they're basically being used as bargaining chips at the polls and ways to attack each other, you know, or ways for politicians to attack each other on the Senate and the fucking Congress, you know, House of Representative floor. Um, so, I don't know. We've got a lot of growing up in this country. Like, yeah. On both sides. Um, and at the end of the day, like, all we look like to, I think, to ourselves and to uh, the rest of the fucking world is a bunch of spoiled brats who have who have been in charge and had it good for way too long, and now we've got nothing better to do than to fight with each other to the point where it causes destabilization of the rest of the planet. And you can't run things and expect to run things if you can't at least look like you know what the fuck you're doing. And right now we don't look like you know what we're doing. Right now we look like we have no idea what the fuck we're doing. And you know, it's it's both it's both sides' fault. It's not just one or the other. Um, getting either side to agree to that statement is not uh, gonna be it. Like I guarantee you, right now, there's somebody listening to this channel right now that is one or the other right now of thinking I'm just a huge asshole and I apologize but I'm not I don't apologize like sorry not sorry both sides have a lot to fucking come to terms with yeah I agree with you on that and I mean what we also gotta look at is kind of like how companies make empty promises presidential candidates they make empty promises because yeah. It could be with any president. None of them. Elected. Yeah, whatever gets them elected. You're right. Talking about like stronger borders or better health care and stuff. It's like I spent um, trying to think how to word this. Um, talking about better health care for all. I spent like. Th- four, five, six months trying to get insurance just to finally get approved. That's not better health care for the people. That's talking, that's just putting it well, bluntly, blunt smoke up people's ass. No, it is. Well, and I mean, the truth is, too, is like people have short memories, too. Like, after the, you know, the Affordable Health Care Act got, got passed, all of a sudden, everybody gave a shit about their insurance premiums way more than they did before. And they, you know, oh, my insurance premiums are going up. Dude, I, as somebody who had health insurance for a, lo- for a long time and someone whose parents had health insurance, you know, for the last 20 fucking years since health insurance became a thing, because that's another thing. Health insurance wasn't always a thing. Now it is, you know, and it's big business. And health insurance went up every year like clockwork before the ACA, after the ACA. It didn't have any difference. Um, it really did, and um, to to sit there and put that information out there is is like you know my insurance premiums never changed you know for twenty years and then the ACA happened and they doubled. It's it's false information. It's not true. Um, and as somebody who had insurance, um, you know I've got a big family. We had uh, health insurance through Blue Cross Blue Shield. It was five hundred and fifty dollars a month. And every year, we'd get a, a new list of shit that they didn't cover. You know, they cover this, they didn't cover that. And thanks to, like, the one thing that the ACA did do that was a good thing um, was that it did away with the pre-existing uh, condition requirement. So, because the deal is, is if you have insurance and you get sick and they, they, they diagnose you with a condition, you were stuck with that insurance company no matter how shitty they wanted to be and how expensive they wanted. They basically had a monopoly on your life, and I'm sorry, that's not right. Um, if if I'm, it's it's like anything else. I am hiring an insurance company to provide a service, and if they do a shitty job, I should be able to fire them and go look for another company. Um, 
but before the pre-existing condition clause came about, like you couldn't do that. And I mean, like I said, we pay $550 a month for insurance but every year. The things they didn't cover got bigger and the things they did cover, they paid a less and less percentage of, uh, you know, like co-pays would go, you know, up like, dude, it got to the point where we had insurance that we couldn't afford to use. Okay. Like, and that's, that's garbage. That's not right. Um, we have a major problem, you know, in this country with healthcare, and I, I don't know, man. I don't understand why I, I – and, and that's another thing where I differ from a lot of folks. I don't see how that, this is a partisan issue. Um, I don't see how – and I don't, and the truth is is they've done the math, and they wouldn't even have to raise taxes on anybody if they would just take – because we're taxed a lot anyway. Like, they just – basically reprioritize what they're doing with our tax dollars, you know, cut a few areas here, change a few things here. Um, we could have universal health care in this country. We're, we're like one of the only, you know, industrialized countries, advanced countries that doesn't have universal health care. We're literally, there's, I don't think we're the only one, but I think at most there's only like three of us left that don't have it. Yeah, in countries like Canada, um, Switzerland, and I think China's the other one. I could be wrong about the China one. Those yeah. are some big countries that have universal health care. And so far, they're doing pretty good. I mean, yeah, taxes for them are a little bit higher than the norm, but it's kind of like alchemy, equivalent exchange. You have to give something to get something sometimes. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I, I want something for my tax dollars. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's where that's my that's my approach. I don't mind paying taxes, but I want something. I expect something for them. You know, like I, universal health care and 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 at least, you know, like two year college degrees for all. If you want to go get your master's degree, then sure. Maybe you got to pay something in because that's a lot of school. But at least, you know, your basic, you know, general education college, I, like, I wouldn't mind paying in my taxes so that we could all do that. Because, I'm sorry, a healthy, educated population makes for a, 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 a better country. Yeah, and so. the school system's all whack as it is. No, it is. And they, dude, in all honesty, both sides need to take a, a step back. Um, cause it's really depending on where you live. Like, you know, people, my friends that live, uh, you know, in California say that public education is just a big liberal indoctrination, you know, camp. And then like, I live in Oklahoma and all I hear from my kids, teachers is religion. And like, they're not even, teachers aren't even supposed to endorse religion. Like the kids themselves can pray in school if they want. Teachers just aren't allowed. The school is just not allowed to endorse it. Um, prayer in school is not illegal or been removed. It's just it can't be led by the school. Um, and I'm sorry that I think that's good because you have kids in school, people that aren't, you know, Christian or you know, like, and if they're a different religion, then they, that goes against their religion to hear that shit. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's I don't have a problem with that. But like, like I said, I I, go, I live in Oklahoma, the buckle of the Bible Belt, every day or at least twice a week. One of my kids comes home and talks about, you know, a, their, you know, math teacher was talking to them about religion. And you're like, well, that does nothing to do with math, <laughs> you know, and it's just, I, it's, it's not the place for it, it, you know what I mean? And so I think both sides need to take a step back because like literally, like I said, both sides need to just take a step back and grow up a little bit. Everybody feels like they're being attacked. Everybody feels like they're being picked on. Nobody understands that in some situations they are in fact the bully. Nobody, nobody on either side. And so it's just, it, it just, some things need to change. Yeah, because, I mean, it's one of those things where it's really hard to truly see the damage that is being done to the country at times. Because, I mean, we, we live in areas that are pretty nice i bet but if we really take a look at the country like in the big cities like new york los angeles san diego there's a lot of damage that has been done because 
our politicians and stuff really don't care. No, they don't. And it's like that everywhere. I mean, Kansas is another one. Um, you know, we like to talk about the coastal cities a lot because it's it's the most apparent. They're the most lived in. They, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like there's there's so many people there. There's more going on, so they get more news time. And so we talk about them the most. But, like, dude, when I was driving to Florida a few years ago, we drove through some places in Alabama that if I just took pictures and showed people, people would be like, oh, what horrible third world country is that is? And, like, no, nah, that's Alabama, dude. And there's a family with, there's a family with kids living in that fucking house. Uh-huh. You know? And so, like, it's and it's because of the policy, dude. It's it's at the end of the day, you're right. Politicians don't care. Um, but at the but at the same time, the reason they don't care is because public or uh, private interest. Yeah, I'm talking about big business. Uh, pays them not to care. Like this this huge thing that the private sector is going to save our butts and government's the problem. Is, is a myth, dude. They're in bed together. Um, the government was bought and paid for by the pri- private sector 35 years ago, man, when we got rid of all the regulations to keep them out of government. Um, I can show you a video right now of the CEO from Merrill Lynch telling Ronald Reagan to hurry up on national TV while he's trying to pass a bill to do away with those regulations. It's like what? You you the, the a leader of a of the the boss owner of a company just told the leader of our country to hurry it up. It tells you who's really in charge. Yeah. So they're in bed together. I mean, it's no one is like a government is just a tool of the people. The problem is that the people aren't running it anymore, man. Yeah. I mean, none, none of them. And it was basically worn like years ago before I was alive and yeah. before you were that this would happen and I'm sound like a good friend of ours right now with this whole conspiracy thing going on. <laughs> yeah. But it's just crazy to think about it like that like years ago my grandmother tell to me all the time that things were a lot better years ago when one the private sector wasn't in the government and how things used to be a lot better we used to not be afraid of shit happening like 9-11 or or terrorist bombings at train stations yeah and now it's like we're so desensitized. We look at the news and it's just like, oh, there's an air bombing in in yeah. our country. Yeah. Another bombing, another shooting, another another dead this, another yeah, no, it, it is. I don't know. It's but at the same time a lot of that is just people looking through history with rose colored glasses, man. Because the truth of the matter is is that I'm a history buff, dude. Like I love history. I've studied history. I was a civil reenactor, civil war reenactor as a kid. Um, always been a huge history buff. And the truth of the matter is, is there's a lot of that is bullshit. Like the good old days weren't always the, weren't actually the good old days. Like back before, you know, the good old days before women could vote. The good old days, you know, with Jim Crow laws. The good old days with, you know, slavery. The good old days. You know what I mean? Those were the good old days. And, like, I think a lot of people just look at them nostalgically because they were kids and life wasn't hard when you're a kid. You know what I mean? Like, I look, yeah. at, my tri- I look at my childhood like, oh, before I was afraid. Before, and it's like, it's not necessarily that. It's just, it's just nah, I was a kid. I didn't fucking know. You know what I mean? Like, when I was a kid, um, you know, like, there was shit going on. The IRA, which is the Irish Republican, uh, Republic Army, uh, we're, you know, fighting and blowing up shit in their country, and there was just a big rash of, you know, abortion clinics getting bombed by, you know, Christian, you know, fundamentalists in America when I was a kid, and Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer was eating people, you know, <laughs> there was shit going on then, too, it's just, I, then we didn't have the 24-hour news cycle, too, like, after 9-11 happened, everything changed. 
the media, instead of just being something we watched at 6 and 10, became a 24-hour fucking thing. And news channels had their own cha news stations had their own channel. You know what I mean? Like, it just... And so now we're just drip-fed all this shit. And we're told to be scared and fear your neighbor. And, and, and I think, honestly, there's not near as much to be afraid of as they want to be. Because it keeps us divided to do that. It really does. Because the second we start fucking figuring things out and working together and realizing that it's not what, like quite like what they tell us it is, then their control goes away. As soon as we're not afraid and we don't think we need them anymore, they're fucked. Yeah, because it's one of those things where it's like, I look back at my childhood all the time and I remember when I was little six, seven, eight, it's like, oh, I don't, didn't have a lot to be afraid of. I look back and I lived in some dangerous neighborhoods. Yeah. And I'm just like, how did I not get shot? <laughs> yeah, and but that was back then. And it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's always been. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's there's always been danger. There's always been, you know what I mean? Like, it's it's all a ruse, man. Like, it's it's all there to, to, to make us go, oh, I need this this thing. I need this politician. I need this, you know. Or, oh, you know, I, it justifies prices going up on things because, you know, it's blind man. And it, it's, dude, it's all, it's all just a dance, man. It really is. Um, and, like, I'm not saying that there's not danger out there. I'm not saying that everything is, is, is not true. In fact, most of it is true. That's how, but that's how, like, it, they, that's how it works. Is because it's not ever out and out not true. It's embellished. They take the truth, and they're like, "Oh, this happened," and and like, and it's a story where you know, let's say, I, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head, but let's just say some travesty happened, right? And then they go, "Okay, this happened," but how can we make this? You know, how can we spin it? You know, oh, well, this happened, and you know, it, and, you know, they make sure to tell you exactly when and where it happened, how it happened, and and then they then they go, you know, but it could happen next to you. It happened anywhere, you know. Oh, you know, and like, and and yeah, watch your neighbor, or or you know, it, this type of person did it. So you know, if you have a neighbor that you know eats spinach, keep an eye on him, you know. And it's just it's it's goofy, dude. Like. When you really look at it and pay attention, like you're like, okay, like, and then you go outside and the sun's shining and the fucking birds are singing and the clouds are in the sky and life is just going on as it always does, you know, like, but if you watch the news too long, you think that there's a war zone right outside your front door, you know? Yeah. And it's, and it's all of them. Like, and they all cater to whoever their, their, their audience is. You know, Fox News will tell you to be afraid of this. CNN will tell you to be afraid of this. MSNBC will be tell you to be afraid of fucking everything. That is so true. And so, you're just like, <laughs> whatever, dude. Like, I, no. Like, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to hate my neighbor. I don't even know the guy. Yeah, he's a little weird looking, but what the fuck ever. So am I. Like, you know, like, it, it's just silly, dude. It's just a ruse to keep us all divided and keep us all fighting amongst ourselves. Because at the end of the day, if we ever realized that we could work together and, and do everything we wanted to do as a, as, a, as a society, like, they wouldn't, we wouldn't need them anymore. And then they would be fucked. So, anyway. But, man, um,. I've got to go. We've been talking for quite a while now. I mean, we'll, how long have we been on? An hour and ten minutes. All right. The, roughly how long I was thinking this would last. We got to, through all the talking points. Well, most of them. Well, good. I mean, dude, I thought, dude, I think it really, really well. We had a blast. I had a blast talking about this shit. Yeah. Uh, we, need to, we need to do this again, obviously. 
I don't know. I, I, I hope I didn't talk too much. <laughs> no, you're good. I usually just talk about the talking points and let other people speak their minds. Hell yeah, brother. Well, dude, it was a blast, man. Um, I hope we can do this again soon. Um, eventually, it'd be cool if we could take this to, you know, do a, a weekly podcast and put the VODs on uh, YouTube. Like, next time, I'll make sure to be on, you know, we'll, I'll have a video of me as well. You know what I mean? Like, we'll do this a little bit uh, more professional. Yep. But uh, thanks for having me, dude. It was a blast. No problem. Glad you enjoyed it. All right, brother. Well, uh, be good, and I will talk to you tomorrow. See you then.